Hi guys, welcome back to round four of the regional championship here in Cologne. Exciting I, stuff. I, I mean, this is all, as soon as you get to round four, you're like, all right, we get the tasty stuff now because this is like people who are genuinely doing quite well. Yeah. And literally no one's surprised. One of them is Tord. Tord yeah. Reklev. We have him on so this round. <laughs> like we already uh, mentioned earlier, uh, Tord Reklev, one of the best players. I think some people would even say he is the best player I in the whole I world. I mean, with his track record, is it much? It's not hard to debate that, is it? Yeah. Look at so it. if you if you take a look at his best accomplishments, he won uh, the international Indianapolis and also the one in London. Uh, he won another international, but because of our rating, <laughs> uh, actually his, his second place in Columbus is rated higher than that. And then also top four at the recent World Championship, which was the exact same format. Yep. Um, he played. I don't think he played the same 60, but uh, almost the same deck as uh, Kaya who d um, did, who yeah, won yeah. the um, junior division. Uh, so, uh, I mean, it's is there, any it's is there anyone left, isn't it? Yeah. Look at is it's there so anyone left who doesn't know Tord? So and he, he's playing apparently a very secret deck. He's on Twitter he said, everyone who saw the deck <laughs> laughed. laughed. <laughs> but um, he's up against... Stefan Eriksson. Yeah, he's against no Stephen slouch himself. He also has a hell of a record. Yeah, I mean, if we just wanted to stream Tord, we could have done it in the first few rounds, but we were waiting for a spicy opponent. And I think we've got the one. <laughs> we have someone who is uh, very well uh, versed in that kind of stuff, uh, Stefan Eriksson. And well, when you understand the graphic, on the top it says the best results. So but this from is Cash Era. Yeah, so, so like, look at the best results and then the latest results. If they're different, then he has a lot of <laughs> results yeah, exactly. uh, in his petto. And also, he's been playing f since forever. Uh, yeah. He was winning big tournaments before uh, we even uh, kept track of that. Yeah. Uh, and if you look at the decks, they are very spicy. Yeah, he's not someone who's known for playing things that are like straightforward, run of the mill. Uh, his list this time also isn't. I've just had a quick look at it. Mm. Um, there are some inclusions in. I want to call this his Rashi ability Rashizad. Well, okay, so... But I'm struggling. He, pl he plays four well, though. But he plays one Rashi Rashizad, I think, so... Tord also so plays four well, yeah, but Tord also an Incarda. Yeah, so, <laughs> well, let's let's see where this is going. So we have two players who all play four well, which is arguably one of the strongest cards in the format, but they're using it in maybe very how ways. it never has been used before. Very, so very, very exciting ways. stuff here. Um, let's see... Who is actually uh, who will be able to pick up uh, the win? So the players are currently uh, yep. setting up. Um, yep. They are. I think Todd had a mulligan. In enjoying their right here with us. Yeah. Um, I really want to talk about these decks, but on the other hand, I want to see them in action first. Yeah, I was just going to say, like I can I can read it out to you, which would be a bit unfair because I don't want to uh, spoil anything. <laughs> and also, well, okay. I don't understand. <laughs> well, this is the thing. This is going to be an exercise in improv for us. Yeah. Of going, okay, so this is why he's playing this card. Because there are cards in here that I don't fully remember the details of for both players. Mm. I'm all, no, that's not okay. Right. For, to be fair, Stefan's deck, I think I know what all the cards do. Yeah, I think I Towards know. Towards this, tor like... I know, I know the card in his deck as well, but it's... it's yeah, it's oh very, very, this very is gonna nice. be interesting. Um, um, yeah, so everyone so in chat, I want to take, I want to take your sweepstakes on what you think this deck is now. Get, yeah, get, get your guesses in before we get to see the action. Because yeah, so we're not spoiling anything, but no matter what is in your hand, it's, it's the not prize bad. cards are coming down. So <laughs> there'll be some hints coming up. But yeah, so let's take a look at the prize cards. Uh, this will be very interesting for both players actually. Yeah. In um, fact, both de both decks are decks that would like to have access to their prize cards. Yeah. So like you see an Encada and like. It wasn't really played that much. There was a very strong deck that played um, the Shidinya, mm -hmm. but it was Control. Mm -hmm. And Todd was like, well, uh, let's try not Control deck with yep. that. And As let's see if this uh, works out. And then also in Stefan's Discord pile, there's a Tapu Fini. Counter card against Blacephalon. I don't think there's too much Blacephalon, <laughs> but... Uh, Straight away. He w I don't really think he will need it. And three Welders on, Steph uh, on Stefan's side. Like, the first thing you see is like, oh, colorful, and then you're like, wait, wait, there's three welders? Oh, yeah, phew. yeah. But also, so. it's it's a Hapu straight away from Tord, and already, Stefan's going, oh, yeah. this was, because Tord put a tweet out last night, right? Yeah, exactly. With, like, a kind of, sp like, a hint for what deck his, he was playing, and he was like, it's got a Shininja in it, and you're not expecting a Hapu. 
mm. straight up when there's a shit injury in this list. Yeah, so Stefan is also just like, nah, okay, so Charizard, <laughs> is it? <laughs> Uh, Naga Naga Jax, okay. <laughs> He's All like, right. okay, so this is this is Mewtwo, okay. Because mm, Mewtwo's so really the only deck that plays Hapu. Yeah, sure. And also, like, I mean, he plays Charizard. So. Yeah. Um, um, toward doing us a favor and putting the attacking options to one side in his uh, in his discard pile makes his checks easier. Also, makes our life a lot us, easier. Yeah. Because it's, it's just very nice. If like, does he have access to this? Oh, he does. Good, good. Mm. We can work with this. Yeah, Mewtwo Dex. I didn't spend too much time actually thinking about them, but when I tested, I thought the deck is insane because it seems like uh, like it should be very difficult to play. Mm -hmm. And also the decks ca are very crazy because you have access to so much stuff. But then on the other hand, you plan your matchups out and you know which Pokemon you're going to attack with. Like you're playing against a big tag team uh, deck, then okay, you have Latios, GX and... Uh, you have all your options, so like you should know what you're doing at each point of the game. Yeah. But then you don't really want to play two offs, so you have to play a lot of one offs, and then the challenge for this deck is genuinely the deck building phase. Yeah. Because because as soon as you put Mewtwo in, your attacking options become basically Everything. limited. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, any GX that is legal, what c what attack do I want? So that is the biggest issue of like what's the most efficient attacks what attacks do I think is worth teching with are there anything that I'm like oh this is really interesting um, so in particular in Tord's list he also has the fairly standard things of like the Makago GX which I think is the most efficient um, attacker for like the big knockouts then you also have the Espeon and Deoxys GX because versus Malamai you go oh that's cute you've got a lot of NKs nope and you have the Charizard GX because the GX attack for 300 is oh, a lot of numbers. Oh, look at that. He has options. So he got the Sogaleo in this cut pile, which is great. Um, he got the uh, Makago and also the Mewtwo's active. The Greninja uh, GX. Very interesting card. Um, this is one of the ones that I can't remember the text on, to be honest. Well, I know, I know it's the one that you can uh, play from your hand. Uh, without uh, oh, it's the some it's the it. promo one from yes. thing. Yeah, okay. It's the um, so let me really check that. Uh, so it's not affected by weakness resistance. <laughs> but meanwhile, well, it can the GX attack can give one of the opponent's Pokemon back into the hand. <laughs> also, Stefan, don't worry, it's fine. You can re continue reading. Stefan was doing the same. It's oh yeah, it's, it's perfectly <laughs> acceptable to go. The what now? Um, well, yeah, I re like I remember in Japan actually we tested that deck um, because the ability seems fine, and then you had Water Patch and Kelio, yep. so my friend was like, "Oh, well, that seems pretty good," but I don't think he ever used the GX attack. <laughs> but uh. Todd has the Hearth. He has two Fire Energy. This is a pretty good turn one. Yeah, sure. Um, um. He doesn't, of course. He already played Hapu. Yep. So um, no welder here, but uh, if he can <laughs> attack with Sogaleo, he actually he he's takes like two Sogaleos, right? <laughs> yeah, he's playing two so copies. Just to be sure. It's so not this was actually something that in my testing of this deck was the first thing I was like, right, the list. So okay, right. I'm not going to say that the list that won Worlds <laughs> wasn't good. <laughs> I was, I was However, yeah. I am going to say it could be improved yeah, because sure. things like the Sogaleo was like talking to Robin about the deck. He was like, right, the first thing you do is you pitch a Sogaleo power up your attackers. Just keep going over yeah. and over and over and over again. And if you prize it, you can't do that, and yeah. then you cry. Exactly. So, play two, make it less likely. Um. Yeah, so, um, Todd went for communication into the Ninkada, and Stefan was just like, what? He's Wait. coming at you from all angles here, isn't he? Yeah. He's like, I've got all the attacking options, but also, you're not taking as many prize cards as you want. Yeah, so, it's very cool inclusion. Um, if your opponent takes a knockout on the... Um, on the Ninkada, then okay, well, they draw a prize card. Not too important. I don't think he plays a lot of non-GX Pokemon. I don't actually think he plays any non-GX no. Pokemon. Uh, so, Ninkada get knocked out, whatever. That is but actually the weakness of the deck. The, hmm? what you it's actually one of the weaknesses of this deck. It's like everything else in this format has options to play non-tag team attackers. So, Heatron GX is only two prizes. So, okay, it's a GX, but it's better than three. And you have no, there's no way of doing this with Mewtwo. There's no good viable option to play a non-tag team attacker. So the only way you can ever help with your prize trade is, I guess, via Shedinja, which yeah, so he's is a going creative way of doing things, but this is what Tord does. He this sees the rules and really goes, no, we're just going to really play with these rules and like yeah. let's build what we can. I actually played against some decks that played just Shedinja. Uh, I played against Shedinja Zorak. <laughs> I had a Champions League once. <laughs> um, Man, Japan plays the weirdest yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's 
Yeah, I was I'm bottom tables all the time, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but let's not forget Stefan's turn. So he went for a Stellar War. She has a bunch of energy cards in his hand and a Deed Energy X. So yep. for Stefan, like, like we already said, his deck isn't that uh, what you would usually expect. So um He's a little bit more teched out. He has a copy of Lugia GX. Uh, the Vizep Strike line, which is really nice because if you are worried ever about... Well, he's not actually playing the whole line, is he? He's actually just playing... Well, he plays Ditto. The yeah, he plays the Ditto. ditto which means that if you're worried about getting stamped, which in the mirror or versus Picaram is like a huge turn, if you can get the Picaram, uh, the Zeb Striker down, you're fine. Like You can probably draw into something you need. Um, it also yeah. helps fuel up the discard with like more fire energies if you ever need to go for a big Victini play. So it's not uncommon, but it's not massively common either. Yeah, but I mean, you can play the Ditto Prison Star anyways, because um, the only matchup where it makes a big difference is against Malamar, then of course, 40 HP on a Ditto, that's, well... It is what it is, right? Very, yeah, <laughs> it's so not that's, that's a problem, but if you're able to evolve it from that point onward, it doesn't really matter anymore. Yeah. Uh, so playing the Ditto is kind of like a... Uh, you usually don't cut any Vulpix for it, you play it as an extra, so... Uh, you would never play like one Vulpix, yeah. one Ditto. So you play, uh, most people play three Vulpix, I think. Um, but then like having one Ditto, uh, it gives you a little bit less Malama matchup. But I don't think Malama is what most people are actually afraid of. No. Um, especially yeah. now that it became a meme that Malama just doesn't draw any cards. Um, so it looks like Stefan actually has a really dead hand. So there's no supporter yet. He's already did any this turn. Yeah. So there's no welder. And... I think is one of the most defining features of this format is if you hit your turn one welder, you are happy and you're probably just going to run away, like not run away with it, but you're in the game. Tor didn't have it either, but Tor didn't need it because all he does now is attach manually from hand to start powering up with the Sogaleo, so he doesn't really care. Well, yeah, but I have to correct you. You said if you have a welder, but <laughs> you for welder into welder. if you have <laughs> the welder because he only has one left in his deck. Um, he, yeah, this is true. His odds weren't particularly high of finding it. Yeah, and it, I think it's also his only supporter card. Yep. Uh, like you would expect. So for him, it's just like... Okay, I have one supporter card in my deck. Yeah, so this is uh, he like should know by now as well. Yeah, well, he's definitely he's already searched for at least for the, uh, for the Vulpix, right? So he's gone, oh, wh where are they? They should. I, I was expecting more of the good cards. Mm, yeah. Uh. It's actually really weird because um, I just realized that Walla, it's a woman, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to say she, right? Like oh, yeah. We should, we, we should be more careful with this. Oh, yeah. yeah we'll, we'll, we'll work on that. Uh. Uh, so <laughs> Tord, meanwhile, giant hearth, two fire energies. I think he might be doing things this turn. I mean, attached to Mewtwo, attack with Solgaleo, sounds like a pretty decent Atta plan. Yeah, attached to Mewtwo, attack with Solgaleo, but before that, maybe bench another Mewtwo so to start powering up a second attacker. Yeah, exactly. Like and if off you go. If you have nothing on your bench... He uh, hasn't discarded his other Mewtwo yet, I don't think. I don't know if he's discarded his, his uh, Mewtwo, because one's prized. Oh, he's playing four copies, yeah, he plays so he's fine. Four, so. Oh, okay. He even has the Welder, so... Well. He has some more option, but since he's Sergal uh, since he Sergaleo can just take a one hit, uh, take a knockout on Jirachi as well. Um, yeah, it's not like he really needs to attack with anything else. Um, but actually, if he doesn't get uh, another Mewtwo in play, it's not great. Uh, well, I don't really think you want to have energies at your Didena, but I mean, oh, let loose. No, no, let loose rotated. Oh, I'm um, yeah. Yeah, you're you're, okay, you're too yeah. you're too used to this Japanese no, format yeah, stuff. I, I didn't I didn't play words. Uh, this reset uh, hole, uh, Marshadow. Yeah, that's actually pretty nice. Um, I mean, you may as well play it here, but it does mean he's not going to get another attacker down unless you know, he's going to well shoot you first. He can just uh, discard it, right? So even yeah. if if he finds uh, Mewtwo now or maybe a Charizard uh, Reshiram, he plays uh, a single copy of, which also doesn't really matter if it's in the discard or on the bench. Yeah, exactly. Um, so he can just use a reset hole and then, yeah, go for it. I mean, the attack won't really matter. No. I, I remember when this card came out, everyone was like, oh, cool, that's uh, pretty nice against the Buzzwall. Uh, but now, yeah, the Rock isn't very important, so Buzzwall isn't very important. I have more issues with, well, issues. Oh, yeah, I sure, have more sure. comments. Have a look at one of the energy that's on the palm of this, uh, of this uh, Mewtwo. Oh, yeah, it's a weak guard energy. I There's no Jirachi. It's pretty cool. Oh. So it's asymmetric in the mirror. So, because the problem in the mirror is that when you're playing in the mirror, when you as soon as you put one, of you, you both want Jirachi because yeah. otherwise you're just both hitting each other for weakness, and the game is like two turns maximum. Yeah. So you, one of you plays a Jirachi, but it's symmetrical. It, but it turns it off weakness off for both players. Yes. Weakness guard. It's like no, 
I want to have no weakness. You can deal with it. That's, yeah, so I think that's thi spicy. I think what other people were laughing about is just this Mew too. Like, yeah. Shedinia weak art energy, fire <laughs> energy cards. Uh, very, very cool stuff. So the weak art energy is pretty nice. I really like it. It just gives you uh, different options. Uh, so you don't have to bench any Jirachi, so you can't start with it, obviously. Uh, you don't take up your bench space. Um, your opponent can't grab it active and then yeah. take an easy knockout on it. Um, and also you can use it on your um, other Pokemon as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I think for the end it doesn't really matter. I don't think there's any fighting deck in the format. I've heard rumors uh, of a deck that Mark Lutz may have been oh playing. Yeah, I, I uh. actually saw that on, on Mark's stream. Yeah, I don't uh, know if he's playing it or not, but th there I may I be I a I fighting deck in this format. He posted that he plays it. Okay, so, uh, okay, so there is one fighting deck <laughs> in this tournament. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but you can also attach it to your Reshiram Charizard if you ever start with it or have to attack with it. So yep. uh, no frost loss. Yep, <laughs> Stefan just going to have to keep Cherish Balling and Dede changing away to keep going because sometimes you just got to do what you got to do and that means throwing your whole hand away going, that's all rubbish. Um, can I have a new one, please? Mm. Um, the Nine Tails in play is actually quite nice because it means he doesn't have to go through the bigger HP numbers of the Mewtwo. If he doesn't have to, he can. Like there are three Dedenes in play. If he really needs to, he can take three Dedenes out. Yeah, but then you never knock out a Mewtwo, so you every every yeah. time. So every Dedene you take out from the bench is uh, uh, resets the attack from uh, Charizard Reshiram if he attacks with it. Um, Torch still hasn't used his GX attack, so he can use the uh, GX attack from the Charizard, which is in his discard pile. A new card from yep. the uh, Hidden Fates, which, well, Hidden Fates didn't really add much. Uh, it only basically added this card for this deck, uh, so you can just deal yeah. 300 damage uh, with the GX attack, which is, well, quite nice to have. Um, you can also do 300 uh, damage with Reshiram Charizard's uh, GX attack, Kay. but you need a lot of energy cards. We for do see energy. Hooper. This is another one of the techs that we see quite frequently now in this format because, I mean... It's really good. I mean... It's so good against this. Obviously, Todd only has Pokemon with abilities in play. Unfortunately for Steven, the Shedina doesn't count. Yeah. Um, it also, it doesn't matter so much because even if they're in play, the damage is not enough and because he can heal himself fairly easily anyway. So it's not a massive deal. But the Hooper has resistance, which means that you can't just straight up KO it using the Solgaleo attack. You have to like use one of the bigger attacks, which kind of don't want to waste your time right. doing. So Galilee is 120, right? Yeah, so you, can, okay, you, yeah, can, yeah, you so wouldn't have KO it anyway, but like any of... The, uh, like, yeah, sure, sure. Like you have to use a, a thing that's doing a lot of damage to be able to KO yeah, this. Yeah, you have to use an actual <laughs> attack yeah. on that non-GX Pokemon. Uh, but even Admonition, really interesting attack. Uh, just gives you an easy uh, easy non-GX uh, non attacker that can deal a lot of damage against a lot of decks. Super good against Malamar. Like, it didn't say yes. anything against Malamar. Uh, really good in this matchup. Um, even Pikachu Zekrom plays a load of abilities now. Like, there's basically no deck that isn't flooding their board with abilities for you to capitalize on. Yeah, and then also it only needs colorless energy. So in weird situations, you can even use Mind Shock if you are kind of forced to it with Welder. You can just like try to go for it. Yeah. Uh, so now on Torch side, he it's another st goes for a stadium. This time he discards the uh, Reshiram Charizard, so he's going full Mewtwo. Uh, what is weird? Like, just imagine knocking out two Mewtwo and Mew GX, and your opponent just keeps playing <laughs> because you only drew like five or four prize cards. Yeah, it'd be kind of sad, right? That's a lot of HP. It's so weird. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is Torch deck now. Uh, s I'm, I'm, really, I'm really looking forward to this. So currently, he has most of his attacking options in, the, in his Discord pile already. I think the only thing missing is actually the Espeon uh, Deoxys and Latios. Yep. The Latios is kind of tempting. Because you know, it just means that the, the Reshiram Charizard can never actually do anything. But right now, there's a lot of energy in the discard pile for Stefan, so you kind of expect the Victini to be the next threat. So you, there's no need to rush for the Latios right now. Yeah. Also, uh, Latios doesn't deal enough damage to take a knockout on Hooper, right? Exactly. So that y you would still get another dam, uh, another one. Yeah. So I think that was Flare Strike from uh, the Charizard to take the knockout. Yes. That's so slightly overdoing it. Well slightly yeah overdoing it for the knockout, it's but you know. 210 damage, not too. <laughs> like, now it's just a low HP number, like 210. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Um, but uh, this way, yeah, it's the only. It's Why couldn't he have actually used the other attack from the other Charizard? Maybe. I don't remember what that attack does. Oh, well, well yeah. Well I don't. It has no text on it. 
it just does damage. Yeah, DS one. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is one hundred fifty. Let me check. Yeah. Um, but meanwhile, Stefan, another deadly change. Just gonna have to keep putting down these uh, things, and he's he has to find his one welder this turn and two fire energy. The, the two fire energy he can guarantee as long as there's enough in deck, but he doesn't look like he has it. It doesn't look like there's any option, and he has no real way of searching for more cards. Here, he's probably gonna have to just retreat and let w something else on his bench get knocked out. He wants to keep the nine tails because this means he can snipe around if he needs to. But, I mean, he doesn't really want to give a free two prize knockout because he's so far managed to force Tor to take single prizes, you know, through on the Hooper and the Jirachi, which means that he's kind of okay. He can catch up if he can ever take a tag team knockout. Yeah. But so the other charge that actually only gives 140, so because of the resistance, it's... Not enough. Oh. Like seems a bit weird for five energy cards and on a stage two. Yeah. Um, but well, let's let's not give to uh, Mewtwo and Mew too many play things. Uh, so on Stefan's turn, he can use Infinity. Uh, so the Mewtwo has uh, 160 HP I left. Don't we'll think he cut his welder. There's oh. only one welder, and if he has no welder. Yeah. If he if he gets the welder, then he can do something. I think he is, yeah, crying, laughing. Yeah. I you can see that this is like a. I've looked at my deck. It's not good. Mm. Like the card, you know those four cards. You know, like we like there. There is a good four off that most people have. Like yeah, I only have one right now. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is not an epic game moment. No, this is this is kind of a feels bad. But All right, but maybe Stefan is he able has to switch, navigate. so he can he can basically promote something, let something take a hit, attach manually because. I don't think Tord has many gusting effects available, or any gusting effects. He can snipe you the bench using the... Uh, uh, Naga Naga Jet. Yeah, that one. Um, but he's not playing any copies of um, Catcher at all. Yes. There's no copies of Catcher. So and no Ninetales, obviously. Um, and you kind of have to make that read, right? Like if you're playing things like Shininja Lines, you can kind of expect your opponent's going to... like. Well, they have to have cut something. And Catcher is one of those kinds of... Because like, it's a four of or none, as soon as you're like, oh, well, maybe I have to cut some cards... For you see, you see he's definitely looking at his price card. <laughs> uh, sign. Yeah. So now, now we are again in a situation where, like, you don't, he wasn't able to take the knockout on Mewtwo and trying to just like get a Dedenne active, so he has more energy in the discard pile. Might be able to use it for an Infinity later on, uh, but this way he just resets Tord's uh, attack. So Tord just needs one energy to retreat the Dedenne, and then he can and already he can start attacking. Yeah. He, he's always getting it because he has the half. Mm. The half of the cards <laughs> uh, is with him, so he's able to get a fire energy. I think this might actually be his last fire energy card. I think it is. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't play a lot of fire energy cards, uh, and he has some of them in the stack. He plays water and psychic basic energy as well. Um, so a bunch of stuff in the stack. He plays Red's challenge, which y you know he said he said like he said he was playing a theme deck for worlds. You know that some of the theme decks do play weird mixes of energy. Well he's taking yeah. it too far. Yeah, he's playing the. <laughs> A Lolan uh, executor <laughs> theme deck, but a little bit advanced. <laughs> yeah, so now we have the big Mewtwo active again. That can just take a easy one at knockout on the Dedenne. Um, Tord still hasn't used this. Oh, no, he's just going to Sogaleo. Why not? Oh, sweet. Right, like Sogaleo, because like you can snipe this at any point now to finish it off. Hmm, yeah. so, so no matter what happens now, is like he always has two prizes. He can, like, I mean, you could you could snipe it anyway with the Naganadel, but he wants to guarantee that he has answers for the Reshizard no matter what happens. And he, I think Tord has a very hard read, especially from like Stefan's. I know we like it when players act, act up to the camera, but it, it, your opponent's sat across the table to you. Yeah. There is there is value in a poker face, yeah, and Stefan sure. looking at his prize cards going, but why is not really well, yeah, a poker face. <laughs> That's basically what happens. It's with still a, it's <laughs> a part of your personality. Yeah. But uh, this way, Todd can set up the 300 damage DX attack. I, I was just going to say that he hasn't used his DX attack yet, so um, he can still take a one-hit knockout. But if he doesn't use, which I just realized, if he doesn't use Sir Galeo, then it's he has a like welder. And oh, here's the welder. <laughs> uh, so he's actually able to draw it, and then if he gets uh, one of them from the prize cards. I don't he know how many fire energy he's got left because he has the they change. Oh, he's got all of them left. Well, yeah, he is, he's uh, using infinity and then he they're all Two, back. Three, yeah, four, five, six, seven. That's gonna be enough. He needs yeah. eight, right? Yeah, yeah he has he plenty. Has, he has enough. Yeah, uh, and then they're all going back, so he's basically yeah, right where he started. Um, but now, yeah. But now he has access to welders. That's a pretty good place to be. Yeah, sure, and he will have it in his hand unless he takes. 
a very unfortunate combination. Yeah, of he'd have to take his prize cards in some very weird way. He'd have to hit exactly the what the Pokemon communication and the Jirachi. Yeah, or and a Feeny. One of the. He has weird, hit, right? Yeah, he has you to hit three. draw three, but you only take two. So if he gets any yeah. combination of these three. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, let's see. So infinity four knockout. <laughs> so let's see. Actually, I just like maybe Tord's deck is just trying to get a price penalty of your opponent because they draw three prize cards. <laughs> Sneaky. <laughs> that's that's actually the big brain strategy. Is you're like, no, nah, I play the like. Why do we play this today? You, do you, you think it's you good? Like, well, it is kind of good. You mean to say that this isn't already big brain because he's playing Shininja? No. Ow. Oh, he's taking this two. Hurts so much. He's taking two. He did not take any Wilder well from the prize cards, and he looks very angry. <laughs> 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 he gave he, he gave his prize cards to stare. But this is GG, right? I mean, like I'm, I'm pretty because well, what what does Tord just here goes KO? Okay, yeah, and also and then what? Yeah, because no. there's no way that an attack is getting powered up. Oof, and now Tord like even if this Mewtwo Mew gets knocked out, Stefan he's sti like Tord is still in the game. Yep. Uh, I mean, all he does here is he can actually just take the knockout by using the... Is the Latios in the discard? Oh, no, there we go. Oh, he wins. Oh, nice. Ah. Set up with the Deoxys. That's some big brain. So he, he, got, <laughs> he got the Deoxys, the very last Pokemon to put into his discard pile. Uh, he was able to put it there. And then because he has now so many energy cards, like, Todd is thinking too much ahead. Like, yeah. I didn't realize that this is, this is also an option for him to just... Well, I thought, yeah, you can do the 300 with the... Uh, with the one uh, with the Charizard, that's very nice. But actually, you can just like put the 20 uh, t uh, 20 damage counter somewhere yeah. and just uh, take this a is what happens whenever I have to like cast Tord. Is yeah. I might okay? I think I know where he's going. I'm starting to learn. Oh no, wait! It's e it, his brain brain is even bigger than it should be. Like, yeah, just, I mean, I mean, to be fair, he built the deck <laughs> and he practiced with it and he knows the cards and we're just like in there for the first time. But Todd will always make us look bad. <laughs> yeah, but every single time I think I understand a matchup, I have a chat with Todd, and it consists of, oh, oh, I didn't realize all of the things I thought were wrong. Well, Even yeah. if they're not wrong, there's just a whole extra layer to how Todd thinks about this game. Yeah, uh, but this is also one important thing um, to always have in mind when you play a game, which makes, in my opinion, which makes the um, Mewtwo deck very difficult, is that you always need to see all winning options mm -hmm. kind of in front of you, and then what the good players do is they choose the right ones. So yeah. the good to be a good player, you need to always see all your winning options in front of you. And then to be th one of the best players is to know how to maneuver through them and yeah. which is the more, most likely. Well, you play to your outs is the phrase everyone uses, but playing to your outs doesn't, like, is a kind of mean, like, that just means play to try and win the game, effectively. Yeah. But spotting the exact way you're going to win the game and the best way to set it up because yeah. like the thing is is that I reckon Stefan also didn't see that Deoxys play coming because mm, maybe I you know, because I don't think the, the Deoxys was in the no, no it, the it was in the discard already it right it was not uh, so so Todd discarded yeah. it on the turn and then drew the psychic yeah. with the Dedena so it's like in these situations like, you can very easily see it as like a I, Stefan has no way to play around this. He has no idea. He's basically lost this game. Well, yeah. like, I mean, the board state wasn't looking good yeah, for him sure, anyway. Sure. But I like mean, well, he would have lost no matter yeah, what. Yeah, sure. But, uh, yeah. So, well, like, to be a good player, you need to see all your winning op like all your winning options at all times, and then to be a better player, you need to understand which is the best winning option yeah. to take now. So, uh, for example, when we are casting, often we see some winning options, but we don't see all of them. And then, uh, of course, this is just the first step. And then you need to know oh, which, which winning option is the best now. And this is a very interesting uh, yeah. discussion to have. But so I think both players are nearly set up. Um, Todd has misplaced his prizes. Mm, yeah, maybe, but maybe, maybe Stefan he will show them to us as well. Yeah. So oh, no, there he goes. He's remembered. So uh, Stefan looks like he started with Hoopa. Yeah, there was a long thought process yeah, for Stefan's start. I was wondering what his hand looks like because he didn't just put it down like you would expect. Uh, looking at the price cards, well, uh, two mu two Mewtwo's. That's fine, four, he's already four, got another one active. Um, but yeah. good news, there's no Welder. Started with one. No Welder for either player, which is very nice to have. Uh, so this time Stefan can actually, yeah, Ma maybe, play. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Let's see, uh, I don't want to uh, jinx Yeah, here, true. So. so straight away. Pokemon communication for a Hyper Rare <laughs> card. Yep. 
I really dislike them because you don't know which one is which, so you just see bling. Yeah, you just see like, yeah, like is it shiny the thing or is it like what? What is this? Let's see what? if I can hang on. It's the it's a uh, Dedani. He's playing two regular arts and a, uh, a hyper rare. Oh yeah, very nice. We have nice the set numbers. We have the. Um, it makes life a lot here. easier. All right, so he just goes for the Russian Charizard. Uh, how like you would expect? L like I already said, like it's for me. It's a little bit weird that he only plays one. Um, I know most a lot of there was a lot of discussion about that, um, but I still think that if your deck is a normal, like he plays a normal abilities art deck, so it seems like you would like to um, just to have the option because it's still one of the strongest attackers. Um, but he plays a lot of like interesting stuff. Uh, so he plays the Lugia GX like we just saw in the press cards. Um, he plays the Tapufini, which are really situational, and then also the Striker, and um, yeah, yeah. So there, ha the space has to come from somewhere. Yeah, I mean there was a lot of people testing. Um, okay, Rashizardless ability, Rashizard. Yeah, I saw that too, but um, because there's actually a kind of a line of thought of going, well, hang on, you're basically like the mo like the the engine that you're playing with the Nine Tails can mean that you're effectively a very very good non GX or like standard GX, not tag team GX yeah. uh, deck. And a lot of people are like, well, maybe this this is how we can push the deck and play it that way. I'm not entirely sure many people... I saw a lot of people trying it or like discussed it with a lot of people who have tried it, and everyone's like, I just think you should play one. because uh, like You need at least one, because it's just very, very strong, and it can win games entirely on its own if you get this big first turn of attach, welder, double attach. Like This thing's ready to start yeah, taking also, Chaos turn two. Like, playing non doesn't seem very good because you have to play Cherish Ball because of the Danergy X, uh, so it becomes easily searchable. Or if you play non non GX Pokemon that are not Psychic or Dragon, you need to use uh, Pokemon Communication uh, for Pokemon Communication to work. You need another basic Pokemon, so it's less consistent. And since yeah, because of the Danergy X, you always need Cherish Ball anyway, and you have to play the Danergy X, so you can't even make this like a well, it's like a non-GX deck with the same engine. You always have to play any GX anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, playing no Rashi's art at all doesn't sound great. But, uh, yeah, M one one should be fine, especially if you have so many other attackers as well. Yeah, you can see Toad really having to go, okay, I'm a bit to de de this hand because it's not the best. But I don't want to discard the other de Dene. I'm going to need that boy. And this is nice because it's like, Cool, I'm going to do that anyway. I'm going to go grab the Solgaleo, prepare myself to have the, the right attacking thing, discard the whole hand, and let's see where we go from here. Yeah, so Tord's um, first turn looking really strong. He got the Welder off, and now he's also able to put the Solgaleo into his discard pile what from uh, what it looks like. Uh, so he can start off attacking with, I forgot the attack name, but uh, Solgaleo right away. Like we said last game, Hoopa is actually quite a, kind of annoying because it doesn't get knocked out from the attack but that's very nice for uh, Stefan that he actually started with it even though I'm pretty sure maybe he would have preferred a well Girachi I but th he got the weather anyway I think that was what the decision was about right was does he really want to start the Hooper but it's fine because if it gets hit into it, there's no real first turn knockout option um, um, yes uh, so we see the Saga Leo now hitting the discard by because of the um I always want to say furnace, but it's a har hearth. Yeah, giant hearth. Hearth. Yeah. Okay, uh, like hearthstone, but not hearthstone. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, turbo strike. Yeah, turbo strike. Um, so ideally, find himself another attacker now, and if he can, he can start powering it up. Yeah. He's with other attacker, I think in this matchup, it doesn't really make sense to use anything but no. uh, Mew to end Mew. No. Uh, I mean, they're too priced. So maybe if one gets knocked out, then you want to prepare a uh, Reshiram Charizard as well. Um, but yeah, Stefan doesn't hit for weakness. Yeah, it doesn't really matter too much. But so interesting to see that he's going for the. I'll play. Th I'll use the hearth before the Denny because like, I actually need the energy in discard. Otherwise, I can't really get any value on my turbo strike. So gonna gonna search my deck, thin it, great. But also get the things I want in my discard already. Uh, also preemptively plays down the reset hole Mars Shadow, which could actually be a really big deal next turn because if he uses it after. He's already used it, and Stefan's used it. If he can kick it now, it was, uh, Stefan has less outs to get into the active position. And Do you like start remember who the played it? Uh, it's Stefan. Stefan? Uh, yeah. yeah, on turn one. So Todd can actually get rid of it and play it again and use it this way yeah. <laughs> if he wants to. Uh, so maybe use it as a way to get fire energy. 
but Stage. The, I think I think the Mark Shadow is pretty nice because it would have been discarded anyways. Mm -hmm. But now it's on the bench. Like I mean, Stefan can't knock it out this turn, and he will probably never knock it out at all. And every time, Torrid would need to think about like ah, oh, this is taking up bench space or. Uh, maybe Tor uh, Stefan is able to take it out. He can just discard it as well. Uh, so it just gives him some options. So there's no copies of Power Plant in, in Stefan's deck, but that's 100% the reason for the reset hole. Marsh Shadow being included in Tor's deck at all is that Power Plant single-handedly shuts down this deck because if you have no abilities, you can't perfection. Yeah, so, so it's a huge, huge thing to have to have because you need to have your own stadium out. So he's playing the Lysander Labs, his counter stadiums, and his copies of Giant Half. He's actually playing five total stadiums. Yeah, in a in a way. So well, he, he, you know, he's, oh he's, he's actually genuinely play, he's playing oh, three he halves two oh and yeah, two labs. Sure, sure. Um, and on top of that, you then add in the Mars Shadow. Yeah, which you can communicate for and just yeah. like have it on your bench. I mean, decks that play Power Plant usually aren't able to take an easy knockout. I mean, yeah. Pikachu, Pikachu Zekrom can take a knockout with the GX attack, but you always know when your opponent might be able to actually use that attack. Uh, so often you can just like bench it, leave it there for a turn, and then use it next turn if you want to attack. Yep. So uh, we see so Tor yeah. did exactly what we thought he would. Turbo Strike. It's a very cool turn. So like turn one, he got uh, three energy active, two on the bench. Uh, the Hooper is damaged. Mm. Casual so five energy turn one. Uh, in theory, if Tor, uh, so if Stefan takes a knockout here, which, uh, well, he can if, if he, he can, if he attacks all his energy. But he's then very all in. Yeah, but this is, uh, this is an exact mirror. Like if this would be an actual mirror match, uh, there would be no way for Tor to get the knockout because uh, he would miss one energy. Mm -hmm. But because he's playing Mewtwo, he can use the um, Charizard GX from uh, Hidden Fate. So yep. this is the reason why you include the card, because it's just one energy less. And that can make a big difference. Well, it means it's basically two welders or a welder and a turbo strike, and you have 300 damage on tap. Yeah, and then, and then so this turn, uh, next turn, Tor can just use welder and then attach from hand. Um, which is, now that I think about it, it's actually kind of annoying that the hearth is out of play but of course Todd also knew well if my opponent wants to do something he probably needs the hearth too yeah. but well Stefan is still asking for a lot because he needs an energy card and a switch mm -hmm. since the hoop has two retreat cost uh, so yeah here again like if this would have been a different Pokemon it would have been knocked out that while giving Todd a prize card it would also put the uh, Reshiram Charizard active now so but let's see what uh, is now. that is I believe his Heatran his copy of the Hyper Ray uh, Heatran he's playing <laughs> I was just going to say, it looks like a Tapu Bulu. Uh, it does look like a Tapu Bulu. Prob probably it's the Heatran, like there's nothing else. I'm trying to work out what it could it be. It has an ability and it's a Hyper Rare, so it's Heatran, I guess. Probably. Um, so, puts that into the discard pile. No could switch. have been an option here, because like, he could have played it and like, he missed the switch. Like He misses the switch, he needs it anyway. Yeah. But he could have actually gone in with the Heatran to take the KO. Go th you know, it, it, it helps this prize trade. If he takes the three prize knockout with th this Heatran using the GX attack, he's actually okay. But I'm not entirely sure on the uh, the rest of it. So what we have now, Hooper can attack if he wants to. Um. So, um, he, but I think he's no switch option, so he's just going to have to hit into this for 60. Okay, so the there's, a, there's, si there's a, a sound issue, I think. There is a problem with the, with the audio. I think it's fine if you just tell them to turn. Like they can take it off, it's fine. So we'll okay, just see, we'll see what's happening excuse there. Excuse us uh, um, for a bit. There's, so there's, a there's occasionally like if people s so if people have a phone with them, uh, <laughs> the microphones are super sensitive. So if someone's phone goes, there's a small chance that the mics pick it up, and if it does, it can crackle. And I think p the players are complaining that it's actually very noisy right now. Um, so hopefully it's okay. Um, kannst, du, kannst du sagen, die können die auch einfach abnehmen. Das, das, die können die auch einfach abnehmen. Also. So, what we'll see. Um, hopefully this is fine. Okay, I think everyone's okay now. Uh, I think it's yeah, fine. Yeah, so... Um, kind of unfortunate. Edge, um. Yep, but in the end it was basically just an evil admonition from, from Stefan for 70 onto the Mewtwo. Uh, So we should have now a case of Tord trying to find a way of getting the setup to take the KO on ideally the Reshizard. He has no gusting options, so it's safe on the bench. But right now it is just a case of finding which attacker he wants to use. 
So he has a hearth in yeah, actually he's an own hearth in hand. That's why he was quite ha safe to kick the um, the mar with the martial lost in is that now he can play his own down, still get his welder off, so he can go into the bigger attacks. Yeah. So, um, but he's gonna have to he's gonna have to two hit take the two hit KO. Unfortunately, here. Yeah, on I, this did Hooper. I, di I didn't see uh, what just happened. So, um, yeah, Stefan didn't get the knockoffs. Uh, Tort. Yeah, so yeah, Tort got some damage. Okay, yeah. See, yeah, so, see, he, so he just went with evil admonition because he couldn't uh, retreat the Hooper. But it's actually still fine. I think attacking with Naga Naga would be kind of cool now, but he would lose all the energy on the active. Which and then he's very all in on the one on the bench, which means that if Stefan can evolve the Nine Tails. Yeah, and take a knockout on that, then it's. Then so it's very bad. Doesn't, news. doesn't seem like a pretty strong uh, play. And if he damages the uh, Reshiram Charizard on the bench, he would still need a Welder, so yep. on that point, kind of very similar. Yeah. But, he uh, kind of gets stuck either way. Outrage would deal 200. Uh, not too... That would be able to knock out the active Mewtwo. So yep. Yeah, but I guess he can just saw Galeo and set himself up. I mean... So I've had a chat with a few players who play this deck because it's a deck that I think is really interesting because it's basically a box. Like it's like a, it's kind of a true box deck. It has so many options. Yeah. Even though if you only kind of you take very specific options, in very specific cases, it is a box deck. And I like these kind of decks as a general thing. So I like the fact that and everyone's like, oh, no, it's not a box deck. Well, all you do is you put a Mewtwo active and you just hit play a Turbo Strike. And then at some point you might want to take a one-hit knockout. So you choose the most relevant attack for a one-hit knockout, and you're fine. Yeah, so there seems to be a problem with, with the, noise the again. Um, headphones. So yeah, we'll see what happens. We will we will try to uh, fix that um, as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, um, currently, they are stopping. So yeah, we'll see yeah, what ha is happening. Um, what's going on? Maybe maybe we actually have to. Now we will we will see how this conspires. So, yeah. Um, yeah, let's yeah. wait a little bit. Uh, so the problem is the headphones are there, so they can't hear us. Mm -hmm. So there is, it's very unlikely that they actually hear us, but it's still possible. Um, so we might have to actually continue without uh, commentary, mm -hmm. just to be sure. Uh, we will ch check that really quick and then yeah, yeah, we I'll will. We will c come back if we in can. A bit. Yep. Okay.
Yeah, so a very unfortunate situation here. Uh, sorry about the um, muted stream for some time. Uh, we do have some problem with our audio setup, so we are going to try and fix that as soon as possible now. Uh, so we will cut into a short break, uh, but I hope you enjoyed the game anyway. So see you, see you next.